Okay, hey guys. Um, some of you have asked me um, how I do my 3D scenery. I use Airport Design Editor. Um, I've got the pro version, but you can use the free version. Just have the pro because of the license key for the pro because it gives me a couple extra features I use a bit, like helper shapes and all that. But you can get a background image in Scene Editor uh, using Scene Edit or whatever it is. Um, it's can't remember the exact name. It's on my desktop somewhere. But it's... There it is. That's Builder X. So, to get this back and back image, open up S Builder X or download it. Tell it you want a new one. Or the like. Tell it you want to show the background. And you'll have to update the tile server and the like to grab the tile you want. So in this case we're going to do a quick drag this way which should get us hopefully yeah, it got us to the edge of the Suez Canal. So okay, Australia. Normally you'd do it from within flight sim it just speech things up. Especially given you can just connect it and have it spit you out wherever. But Let's say we were going to grab Well Camp, which is where I am at the moment. Um, we basically have to find Brisbane, which or Toowoomba or the like, which should be somewhere along here. Okay, that's a Gold Coast, Brisbane. At least I think that's Brisbane. If there's an airport just to the north here, it's Brisbane. Yep. So that's Brisbane Airport. Well, camp is down here somewhere. There's Amberley. Well, camp's actually near Toowoomba, which is here. Um, and it's part of the reason why you really need to find it in FSX or have the lat longs or be really certain where it was. I was lucky I had the lat longs and could, somebody had already done the base scenery. But we we'll just use Ambly for the moment for a quick example. So you're going to do this and you wanted it as a background image. You turn around and go File, Add Map from Background. Draw the box over it like so. Select the zoom level you want, tap OK, gives you this, click on it so it's highlighted, you go File, BGL Compile, Photo Scenery, and tap Compile, and it'll pop up with something like that, presuming you've set this up properly. Then you'd pull up an Explorer window, you'd go find your S Builder. X folder. So in my case, I'm just going to cheat here. I'll go down to S. Open file location. And we go open file location. Find properties. So it's on my F drive in S Builder X. It's where I thought it was, but. Then in here we go to Tools, Work, and you'll notice got a couple of BGL files. If we 
view these as large icons, you can see that they're photos. If we look at this one, you'll see this is actually well kept. But this one here, Alex, is Ambly. And if we look, we've got a text file of the same name. It's got some lat logs, north, south, east, west. Same with the well camp ones here. So, what do we do with that? Well, we go into here, we right click, we go add image, we give it the, we point it to the file, in this case, this one here. Actually, we'll point it to this one, seems it's not already in. Tell it we've got corner coordinates, and this one is actually this set here. So, north is the top left. South is the bottom right. West is the top left. East is the bottom left. We tap save and bingo, it's put it in for us. At that point you tell it to lock the background images and everything's all locked up for you. Um, and it's no longer going to be draggable. At that point you could start building your airport um, over the top of it, which comes in handy for doing some of the work. Um, however, get rid of that image. There's a couple of things you need to understand when working in ADE. All the headings you, you get, so if we go add a runway here, and we tell it that we want it on a heading of 120 or 122. You'll notice that it's not matching this 122. It says that it's 122, but it's not matching. What's going on? Well, the quickest and easy way of looking is to actually grab the ruler tool up here. See, add guidelines. I call it a ruler tool. Click and drag along the runway and look up in the top left hand corner and you'll notice it's saying 1220 true 111 magnetic. So to work out what you need it on for your magnetic, 122 magnetic is 133 true at the location we're at at the moment. So we do this and go 133 and it moves it across and around. Now the other one is it's very rare for a runway to sit exactly one correctly on the heading. Um, once you do that, you want to put in a couple of things. First off, on just on the runway, one is to grab this runway link and basically drag from one end of the runway to the other. And we'll put in a line like this. We don't need that, so we're going to get rid of it. It just allows AI traffic to know that it's a runway and how much of it they can use. The other one is you'll want to add runway starts. Now I can't put any in because I've already got them, but you just click it and it'll give you this little red doodad here. Position it where you want people to start on their runway. Other than that, taxiways you can draw them in like normal. Um, you need to understand that where I, where flight sim puts its touchdown markers isn't always where they are in real life. Like if I drag my polygon here off, you'll notice that I've got my threshold markers set up in different places. That's because this is where the threshold markers are based on photo reference in real life. Flight sim has them further down. Um, the other one is that the ILS flight sim tends to put it back here somewhere. 
um, you'll have most of the time you'll have to manually adjust it and set it up for what you need, like uh, not for the ILS, the Pappies. So like this one's this ends at 420 by secondary because it's offset at the moment, it's all the way down at 700. Um, to add ground polys in, you basically start by doing this. So I'm only using the default stuff here, so what we're going to do real quickly is we're just going to make the taxi line that runs from here all the way down to about here. Fairly certain we can drag while we... Yep. So, we we'll grab this one which is custom ground line. We're going to start it here. Now normally you would actually have the proper apron taxi lines that you could follow. Unfortunately for me at the moment Old Camp doesn't have any photos from top down on any available source that um, you can use to easily trace. So when you're done you just double click on the last one. It'll ask you the line width. We're going to say one meter. We're going to tell it that we want pattern lines and we want single yellow. We hit OK. We make certain it's on 24 um, because this one's 16. These ones are 24 but there's no overlap here. When we do this, which is obviously our old short line, We're going to set this to 25, which is above 24. Uh, it's going to be 3 metres. Pattern lines, and we actually want old short. Do the same here. Twenty-five, three, hold short. Now there is the chance that you will have to come in after and spin these polys around. Just the luck of the draw. It happens sometimes. I need to uh, grab one of my, my history here. I've recently closed nine tabs, one of which is this. So this is well camp. As we can see, it actually is done all the way up here. Um, the other one is one here, which gives us another view of it, and this one here, which all lets us see how far it's come and things like that. So we know that we need a hold short line here as well. 25, 3, pattern Hold short. If it's around the wrong way, then you can either spin the line around or you can actually spin the uh, UV map for it around. Yep. 
the other one we're going to do is we need a nice thick three metre single white line there. And if we flip back and look at our images just now, I did have another one showed this part better but I can't find where it's gone. Um, we need to change this for now just to basically bitumen. So we've got a ground poly on 17 and one on 16 which the 16 one is actually a runway. But we need, this section's actually in real life darker than the runway. So what we'll do is we'll click here, we'll click here, here, and here. I'm going to put this on 18, and we'll just select asphalt dark. Clap OK, there's that part done. Now we need to finish doing our lines here, which was going to take a while, but I'm not going to record that. I've just shown basically the basics of everything you need to do this type of work. If you're adding ILSs in, then it's a little bit more tricky. We'll look at that when, later on. Anyway, quick short tutorial on doing the basics in this. Catches.